Hi, I'm Asto. Recently, I'm really missing some nice croissants. I used to get one every time I was off from work. There's this bakery in the neighborhood that sells really nice croissants. Unfortunately, it's a lot harder for me to get one these days, but I just can't stop thinking about them. So I decided to make a croissant in 3D. I opened up Blender and started modeling. I would say the cylinder is a nice starting point, and I added a mirror modifier along the x-axis with clipping. Then I can start adding these layers or steps by extruding and scaling down edge loops. Repeat this two to three times to get all the layers. I further scaled down the sides using proportional editing, then fill up the tip with grid fill. Twist the tips for a little bit along the z-axis. And since the bottom of a croissant is flat, I selected these lower faces and scaled them down, also using proportional editing. You can enable proportional editing by hitting O in edit mode. Now we have the base model. This thing needs some color, so I decided to give it some procedural textures. The method I'm gonna use here relies on the UVs a lot, so I'll start by unwrapping the croissant. I've marked these edges between the big layers, keeping their UV separated and cut out the tip like this. Select everything and unwrap, and you'll get these UV islands. Then I started to straighten the individual UV islands. Select the entire edge along one of these strips by alt-clicking, then right-click align X to make them a straight vertical edge. Do this for every single edge along the same direction. Then select the edges across the strip and right-click Align Y to turn them into horizontal straight lines. Do this for every single strip and leave the UV of the tip as is. After that, I applied the mirror modifier and further adjusted the UVs. I tried to fill in as much UV space as possible, so I scaled the islands up and make the sizes of the UV faces more regular. Now let's jump into the procedural textures. First, I added some overall shading using three steps of colors and played with the hue using the hue saturation value node. I multiply some ambient occlusion on top, but the effect is way too unnoticeable. I'll come back and fix the ambient occlusion later once we have a better preview. This is more like a quick preview for the shading because later these colors will be changed and multiplied onto another set of nodes, which are the nodes I'm working on right here. I'm using a noise texture to create the thin lines across the croissant. By default, we have a noise texture using the UV coordinates, which doesn't look like what we need. But since we unwrapped the croissant the way we did, if we squash the noise texture horizontally by scaling down the Y of the mapping node, we can create these lines running down the Y axis of the UVs. This will not work if we don't straighten the UVs because the noise will not run along the UV strips. We can then run this noise through a color ramp to make some base colors. At first, I tried mixing the noise and the shading notes, but then I decided to multiply the shading onto the noise, so I have to adjust the colors of the three-step color ramp. I organized the notes for a little bit so they look a little bit cleaner. Right here we have a problem, there is a visible seam at the bottom. So I decided to use one single color for the bottom. To extract the bottom, we can use the generated Z coordinates. Plug this into a color ramp and squash the black and white for a little bit to extract the area that we want. We can then plug this into a mixed RGB as the factor mixing the base noise colors and the color for the bottom. And this mix note is added before the multiply of the shading. The black represents the first input and the white represents the second input, which means the first input is the bottom color and the second one is the base noise colors. 
I then further adjusted the colors and decided to unwrap these faces at the tip as vertical strips as well. And yeah, I added some outlines. Then I went back and adjusted the colors for a little bit more. Now let's come back to the ambient occlusion. Right here, we can still see that the effect is very subtle. And maybe you would say, let's add a converter math between the ambient occlusion and the multiply, and then change this to power. And now if I crank up the value of the exponent right here, we can start seeing these lines right here. What we can do is to add a subdivision surface modifier to give it a little bit more geometry to work with. However, to prevent the edges around the layers to get way too smooth, we can add some supporting edges around the creases and the layers. And then we can add our subserve. Now we are not getting those hard lines anymore. So let's add a color ramp between the power and the multiply and change the color of the ambient occlusion. And you can change it however you want. And now this is how our procedural croissant looks. However, this still looks a little bit too simple for me. While we can go crazy with notes, how about make a hand-painted version instead? To prepare the model for painting, I went back to adjust the UVs. I decided to delete half of the model and add back a mirror modifier. This way I only have to unwrap half of the model and I can make the UV islands less packed. And when we do this, we are gonna have a symmetrical texture for the croissant. This is probably not a good idea in most cases because symmetry makes the texture look less natural. But as I just wanted to spend a little bit of time of the night on a quick project, I decided to sacrifice some naturalness in here. However, sometimes this method is preferable, like when you are trying to use smaller textures but you also want to keep the details at the same time. After this, I exported an OBJ and transferred the file to my iPad, since I'm going to use the new 3D texture painting function of Procreate. It's really the first time for me to use this function, and I'm excited to try it out. During the first few minutes, I can tell that the process and controls are pretty smooth. One finger for rotate, two fingers to pan or zoom, and pretty much the rest of the controls are the same as the 2D painting controls. So I started with the base colors of the croissant, not caring too much about details. As you might able to spot here, Procreate is kinda missing a flat shadeless view. So I can only view the textures with lighting all the time. I try to adjust the environment and lights a little bit so the model is a little bit more well lit. But that's really the best I can do to preview the texture. Then I started adding some details. Some thin lines around the creases, across the surface. I can also view and paint the texture in 2D, so it's really useful when I have to paint textures on these curved surface. It's also interesting how these material brushes actually affects the roughness of the model. With a lot of smudging little details here and there, and I've got myself a base texture of the croissant. Now let's add different flavors. In the bakery I mentioned, they were selling this kind of croissant with little chunk of sugars sprinkled on top. So I went ahead and used this brush called Flex that looks like little ink splashes and sprinkled some dots on top. Preferably, maybe you can also make your own brush for sugars. How about a matcha croissant? I turned off the sugar layer and made a new layer for the matcha. This time I used different shades of green with a spray paint brush called Fat Nozzle to add some matcha powder on top just slightly tapping around the surface. Then I added some bigger chunks with the same flex brush, also with different shades of green. After everything was done, I exported the texture and throw them back into Blender so I can add some shading and lighting. And now we have three flavors of hand-painted croissants, and I can probably make more flavors like chocolate or cheese. But that's pretty much for this mini project. Two styles of croissant. I can probably use these models for future animations. If you are thinking of starting a new project, make something that you like. And in the process, try out different approaches and new methods. And that's pretty much it, and I'll see you in the next video. Now let's have an overall look at the procedural textures.
Right here we have the noise texture using the UV coordinates and we have scaled down the UV coordinates along the Y axis. And then we can extract the bottom of the croissant using the generated Z coordinates and then into a color ramp to adjust the areas that we want to extract. And then the color ramp goes into the factor of a mixed RGB. And the second input will be our noise texture. And the first color is the color of our bottom. Then we have the notes for the shadow. And these notes are being multiplied on top of the previous mix node. And it looks like this. And then to play around with the hue of the croissant, I have added this HSV node after the multiply. And you can see the difference right here. And then I've multiplied some ambient occlusion on top. And the ambient occlusion is strengthened by the power node. And the power node comes from the add inverter math node. And this goes into a color ramp to give the ambient occlusion a little bit of color. And then multiply the ambient occlusion on top of the previous notes. And this is what we have for the procedural croissant.